I'm lost to words with the serial killer being this close in the neighborhood in the Bay Area. The search for a serial killer in the Central Valley has now come to the Bay Area. Investigators say they believe the person behind a series of deadly shootings in Stockton targeted a man in Oakland. Good evening. I'm Julie Hayner. And I'm Mike Meebach. At least six deadly shootings have been linked to the serial killer. Five of them happened this year in Stockton, but now investigators say a deadly shooting in Oakland last year may also be connected. Our investigative reporter Brooks DeRose has been digging into the Oakland case and how it's tied to the other killings. Brooks, what have you learned? Well, it all comes down to ballistics and testing. Law enforcement experts tell me a microscope can be used to look at shell casings or bullets because every firearm leaves behind a unique signature. That information then gets loaded into a national database that can connect crime scenes. But who is pulling the trigger is the big question. Look at this surveillance video. Notice this man's upright posture and uneven stride. Stockton's police chief says investigators want to talk to him about a series of killings seen several times near several of the crimes. This person is a person of interest. Again, we have no evidence that connects this person as committing any of these crimes. Seven crimes, leaving six dead. One woman survived. Justin stocked in five deadly shootings in recent months. All men, all Hispanic, all ambushed, killed alone in the dark. A similar story playing out in East Oakland last year. I was sleeping in the house and we heard the gunshots, two gunshots. We came to the window looked out the window, didn't see anything. But then neighbors saw the flashing police lights. In this news release from April 10th, 2021, Oakland police say just after four in the morning, a man was suffering from gunshot wounds. He died in the street. The coroner tells me it was a 39-year-old man named Juan Miguel Vazquez Serrano. Neighbors say he was homeless. His nature was a good person. You know, he, he, earned his money by working on cars around the neighborhood. The shooting happened here on Harmon Avenue. It's where police collected evidence like shell casings and upon close examination, we're able to link it to a murder weapon and a potential serial killer. Shocking because it's close to my house and it's close to you know, all these kids around here. Investigators say the motive is unclear, and so is the number of cases that could be connected. We're still submitting evidence at this time, which means so far as we've gotten some local hits, but as the evidence you know, continues to be processed and examined, it will alert us if there's a match outside of this county or other places. Now a plea for clues and community help to find this person of interest. I hope he hurry up and get caught, you know, and um, because we need to be safe here. Now, if you recognize that man in the surveillance video, call Stockton police. The ATF just donated an extra $25,000 to the reward fund, so it now stands at $125,000 for information that leads to any arrest in connection with these killings. Julie. And Brooks, the woman who was shot and survived in Stockton, has she been able to provide any useful information to authorities? So one thing with that woman is she was seen near a homeless encampment, and that is when she was confronted by that potential uh, person of interest or suspect. She has been interviewed extensively by police. They did not give any other information about that interview other than to say she described the man wearing all dark clothing and had a black mask on, uh, a surgical mask. So making a positive ID has been uh, tough. Yeah, all right. Well, a case we will continue to follow. Brooks, thank you.